One of the questions we often get asked is,、uh, how accurate is your pre-compliance EMC test setup? In other words, if、uh, the test results show in your pre-compliance test setup showed a pass, are we a hundred percent confident that when we sent the unit for a, a proper or accredited EMC lab test, is going to pass? So in today's session, we're going to show you how. You can set up a pre-compliance test setup and get a very good confidence level. Okay,、uh, we're going to start with conducted emission test. This application note from Murata, and they are talking about their filters for a DC-DC converter used for automotive application. And if you、uh, go through the document, it's a nice document, and they are using a Texas Instrument Evaluation Board for their EMC testing, and you can buy this board from places like DigiKey for about fifty pounds. So I think it's a good idea if I get one of the, the the evaluation board, the same as what they had, and then test in my pre-compliance test setup, and then compare the results to their results. And as you can see here, they detailed their EMC test setup, including the、uh, lizards battery spectrum analyzer and uh, uh, test setup drawings. As you can see, the conducting emission test setup is set up in the anechoic chamber with a very large ground plane and two lizards, and the DUT or EUT sits on a form. Which is insulation material, and it is defined normally in the standard as a five centimeter or fifty millimeter tall.、Um, and you can see here they're using a twelve volts battery because the twelve volts battery is a very pure DC source without any noise, and the battery is actually placed outside of the、uh, ground plane. They measure the listen output using a spectrum analyzer, so. We are going to pretty much、uh, set up similar to what they had here、uh, in our own test、um, facility and compare the conducted emission results with this conducted emission result to see how close we can get. Here is the setup for a pre-compliance conducted emission、um, test setup for automotive applications. This is the DUT, which is a TI evaluation board. The DUT is connected to two lizards. These two lizards are designed for DC. One lizard is connected to spectrum analyzer. The other one is terminated with 50 ohms. We're powered with a 50 well with a 12 volts battery, and then、uh, the lizard output is connected to a spectrum analyzer, which does the、uh, EMC scan. In this case, is from 150 kilohertz to 108 megahertz. The scanning is completely controlled automatically by the EMC View software, and simply click starts. The scan will basically、uh, starts automatically. So this is the comparison result of our pre-compliance test one. Let's call it. Uh, compared to、uh, what Murata had in their、uh, accredited EMC test lab results, as you can see,、um, the profile generally、uh, looks very very similar, with the、uh, first fundamental frequency 400 kilohertz switching frequency close to 80 dB microvolts. Both show very very similar results, and then、uh, decay、um, at the same rate. Um, the difference is, as you can see here, this is their ambient noise re、uh, scanning result, and the green line is our ambient noise、uh, scanning result. As you can see, we picked up some ambient noise, and、uh, like particularly in this region, which is between 10 meg megahertz and 20 megahertz, and close to、um, 100 megahertz, we picked up strong.、Um, Radio FM、uh, noise. This is due to the fact that we have a, a big broadcasting tower only about 15 kilometers away from where we live. So、uh, we pick up the、uh, ambient noise, and as you can see here, the conducting emission results showed slightly higher、uh, compared to this one.、Uh, 
because of the uh, ambient noise. Okay. This is a better setup. So we moved the uh, test setup basically into an EMC shielding tent. Still very similar as before. The DUT sits on the insulation support and then on the ground plane. Then we have the two lizards. The lizards is connected to the feed through filter on the left hand side, as you can see here. And um, simply close the EMC tent. We should be able to shield the whole test setup inside the tent. The EMC shielding tent we're using is from TechBox. Here shows the side wall of the tent. As you can see, on the left there is a big EMI filter designed for mains input. And on the right hand side you have two feed through filters so that they are pi filters for your DC power supply. And of course there are some measurement connectors here as well. Outside of the tent, uh, now thanks to the filter of the tent, we can now power the DUT using a power supply unit as we show here. And as you can see, the spectral analyzer is currently busy scanning. And um, again, uh, we'll show you the automatic scanning software EMC view. Uh, the green line is actually the ambient we just measured, as you can see, very low ambient noise, and the purple line is the uh, conducted emission scanning results. Okay, here we are with the pre-compliance test 2 uh, result, in which case we put the whole test setup inside the shielding tent. And as you can see, we had a much better noise floor and the result is pretty much the same as what Murata has. It should be noted here that because the spikes here is very, um, uh, has very high amplitude, so when we did the scan, we, we, did it, we, we enabled the 20 dB attenuator, which inevitably resulted in higher um, noise floor uh, compared if you, you don't have the uh, 20 dB attenuator. Uh, so that's why our noise floor is um, probably 20 dB higher than, than what Murata had. So if there's a case that we had actually a less noisy unit and then we, can, we, sh we basically disable that 20 dB attenuator, then our result would be even better.